Good morning, everyone. I'm so blessed to be with you today. Thank you, John, for the beautiful music. Thank you, choir. I hope you don't take that for granted. Is that beautiful? And Elizabeth, thank you for the accompaniment and for the organ music. It's just a blessing. Well, I'm, before I begin to share God's word, I was asked to just share a greeting from Hope Channel. It's lovely to see some longtime dear friends. I uh, taught at Southern Adventist University for 14 years. My heart is still very much engaged with teaching, training young leaders. From there, I came out to somewhere you may have heard of called Calamesa, California, near Ukaipa, just up the hill from Redlands on the way to nowhere. And I had the privilege of pastoring there for three and a half years before going to Forest Lake Church in Orlando. And we saw many miracles in Orlando, including the starting of an in-depth interactive Bible study on the Hope Channel called Hope Sabbath School. My wife, Bodil, is the volunteer executive director of that ministry. By the time we left in 2010, it was the most broadcast program worldwide on the Hope Channel. And so they said, you can't stop. Well, I had a full-time job, as uh, Pastor Mark said, as editor of Ministry Magazine and uh, associate director of the Ministerial Association. I was traveling about 150 days a year and uh, training pastors around the world and editor of our international journal. But they said, you can't stop doing Hope Sabbath School, Evie. And I said, I have lots of other work. And my wife said, where else do you give a million Bible studies a week? And I thought, that's a good point. You see, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all nations. And then Jesus is coming back. Hope Channel next year will celebrate its 15th anniversary. 46 affiliates around the world broadcasting in 57 languages. Last April 2016, they pulled me out of the back of the auditorium. I'd been a volunteer for Hope Channel for nine years. They said, we'd like you to become the president of Hope Channel. I said to myself, no, thank you. I love what I'm doing. But as I was walking down the hallway past the screens which show Hope Channel all around the world, I, I saw myself teaching Hope Sabbath School. I, I appreciated, I don't know if it was Evelyn, you shared this, or someone in our group, that the Holy Spirit can catch our attention, right? And as I was walking past that wall, very comfortable in my position in the Ministerial Association, the Spirit of God said to me, I have been preparing you for the last 10 years for what I'm asking you to do. From Forest Lake Church to that day. One of my mentors, I'm sharing this because sometimes you may seek guidance in your life and God sometimes uses people, you know that? And I asked one of my spiritual fathers to pray for me that day. He told me later, I had no idea what you should do. But he prayed for me, and he called me that afternoon. By the way, they had said to me, we'd like you to be president. Take your time. We need to know by 3 o'clock this afternoon. So my mentor, pastor, friend was praying for me. He called me that afternoon. He said, Derek, I knelt down to pray. I had no idea what you should do. And as I was praying, the Spirit of God said to me, call Derek and tell him to take the assignment. Now, I know you shouldn't believe every person, right? Otherwise, you'd be really confused. But when you know someone who's connected to God, who loves you and loves God and is praying for you, by the way, I already had received enough confirmation praying with my wife and listening to the Spirit of God that it was clear what I should do. But it's sometimes helpful when a person of God calls you. Another vice president came up to me with tears in his eyes and said, I've been praying for you today, and I want to tell you this invitation does not come from a committee. It comes from God. 
again, you could say, well, anyone could say that, but I know he loves God and he had tears in his eyes and I'd already come to conviction. But I'm thankful that God's able to lead us, aren't you? He says, I will teach you and instruct you the way you should go. And we have seen many miracles and we continue to see miracles around the world. A young evangelist came into my office from Tanzania and he said, I want to tell you, I preached on the shores of Lake Victoria in February and Hope Channel Tanzania broadcast nationwide to 800 locations and 20,000 people have been baptized. If you don't say amen to that, you, you, you're sleeping. Wake up the person next to you and tell them to say amen. You say it's easy in Africa. Listen, it is not easy anywhere. Demonic forces, darkness, materialism, selfishness are everywhere. When one person decides to follow Jesus, angels sing. I think there was a choir that day. 20,000 baptized. Malawi in the sports auditorium or sports uh, amphitheater there in the capital city. They had evangelistic meetings broadcast by Hope Channel Malawi on the national television network. 10,300 people were baptized in those meetings. I tell you, you say, well, Derek, I wish it could happen in California. You know, I thought about that. I know people are coming to Christ in North America. Everyone is precious. But you know, People who lived so close to Sodom that they ended up living in Sodom and then Sodom was in them. You know the story. Angels had to drag them out. So wherever a person, whether it's here or in the north or south, wherever a person says, I want to stand in Christ, I want to follow Jesus, no turning back, save me, Lord, angels sing. And so I just want to ask you to pray for Hope Channel. Hope Channel Costa Rica has a half a person working for them. How do you get a half a person working for you? He's half-time IT director, half-time Hope Channel director. And God is using Daniel, Hope Channel Costa Rica director, half-time to impact the country. Because it's not by might or power. It's by his spirit that the miracles are happening. So will you pray with me? Thank you for your prayers and for your support. This gospel will be preached to the world and then Jesus will come. That's what I want to talk to you about in the next 20 minutes. Father in heaven, I thank you that we can be here to worship you, to declare all that you have done, to give you glory, and yes, even to call, to make a stand, to say, I want to stand in Christ today. I want to be ready today for the glorious appearing. Speak to our hearts, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the advantages of moving is you find things you'd lost. Do I have a witness out there? Things that you hadn't, you didn't know where they were, right? Haven't used them for a decade. We were getting ready to move, and I found a cassette tape. Is there anyone old enough to even know what a cassette tape is? Well, I didn't have anything to play it on, so I had it put onto a CD. Is there, are there some who still know what a CD is? Okay, it's becoming obsolete, you know that. It's all digital download now. But I put it on a CD because it was my two little boys, age six and let's say three and a half, and they were singing this song, listen. One day I'll look up and see Jesus coming down for me Sitting on a cloud so white With his holy angels bright Oh, then I will shout and sing Glory, glory Our heavenly King, glory, glory, glory. I'm going 
going to play the rest of it in just a minute. You know, my prayer is very simple. That when Jesus comes, those I love will look up and say, glory, glory, glory. Amen? Not run for the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the face of the one who sits on the throne, but to look up and say what? And we're going to be saved by the grace of God. I know you'll be surprised maybe to see me there. I may be surprised. That, no, I will not be surprised. I will be happy to see you there, but we'll all be there by the grace of Jesus. Amen? And we're not going to turn to each other and say, you know, I really thought I deserved that. We are going to say, as I study my Bible, I found out some... Uh, important lessons about the coming of Jesus. I want to just share some good news, some bad news, and the most important news with you in the few minutes we have. As I study the teaching of Jesus, I discover some really good news in his word, and that is that the coming, the return of Jesus in glory is certain. It is what? Look at a few texts with me. You remember Jesus in the upper room and, and this is a beautiful text for Adventist Christians. He said, let not your heart be what? You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, four words, I want you to say them. What does it say? I will come Again, you remember my friend who abandoned me on the side of the airport road? I'll be back, he said. And I believed him because he was my friend. I will come again and receive you to myself, Jesus said, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus actually described, and, and I don't so much want to talk about what it will be like, though you can study it in your Bible. Jesus said, for as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. It's clear in Scripture that the coming of Jesus is certain. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Jesus very clearly told us, his coming is certain. In fact, in the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, at the very beginning of the book, would you read it with me out loud? Let's read it together. Behold, he is coming with clouds, John says, and every eye will see him. This is one of my favorite texts. This we say to you by the word of the Lord, Paul then Saul was not a disciple of Jesus during his ministry, but he, he says, I receive this to you by the word. In other words, by special revelation, Paul received that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who've fallen asleep. In, in other words, those who have died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And what's going to happen when Jesus returns in glory? Now, there are some very sincere Christians, and we ought to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. In fact, we ought to love our brothers and sisters who aren't in Christ, because they're all his children. But there are some who think it's going to be secret. But the Bible is clear. There's going to be a shout of the archangel. Every eye will see him. The trumpet's going to sound. And if you missed all of that, the dead are going to rise. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. It is clear from Scripture the coming of Jesus is certain. I got the cutest email. It was a, actually a text with a little video. Do you, do you have family members that send you little videos? I got the cutest video I've ever got from my 15-month-old granddaughter, Jonathan's daughter, Margot May. 
she's cute. And she was looking at an ultrasound. And her daddy, Jonathan, said, What are you looking at, Margo May? And she said, Bebe. Oh, said her daddy. Are you going to be a big sister? No, I'm watching this video going, what? This is my first word that I'm going to have another grandchild. What? Are you going to be a big sister? And she went. Cutest video. I've seen the picture of my 11 week old in utero baby grand something. We don't know exactly the day that baby will arrive, but she's already starting to show a little, Mama. Eleven weeks, uh, and and she's going to show more and more before we're home, right? And there are signs, and this is not a sermon about the signs of the coming of Jesus. There are signs, by the way. One of the most important signs is that this gospel will be preached as a witness to the whole world. Right? Because then the end's going to come. So I, that's why I love what I do. What a privilege to tell people about Jesus and that he's coming back again. I don't know what day my grandbaby will be born, but this I know. My grandbaby's coming. And on that day, they'll be rejoicing. Jesus said, the Son of Man... Be ready for the Son of Man's coming at an hour you do not expect. That doesn't mean that we don't expect him, but, but we're not expecting him then. But Jesus says, take heed, no one deceives you, for many will come in my name and say, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Here's the most important sign. We're seeing it happen. I'm not telling you everybody will make a decision to accept the grace of God through Jesus. But everyone must hear and have an opportunity. And some will be saved that you didn't expect would be saved. They may not even know about Jesus. They, they may just have heard about a God in heaven who loves them. But I want to tell you, God is trying to save as many as possible. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Is that good news today? The coming of Jesus is certain. But I've got some bad news. Many of the professed followers of Jesus will not be ready. You say, Derek, uh, that's kind of judgmental. No, I'm just telling you what Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven he said, we'll be like ten virgins, took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were. Now, what you notice about these foolish, they, they took their lamps. So they had lamps and they were looking for the bridegroom. But they didn't take any oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom was delayed. And by the way, this is my conviction. I think Jesus is coming at the very time he intends to. But it seems a long time to us. From their perspective, it seemed like it was delayed. And they all fell asleep. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are what? No, I'm not an expert in Greek. But that tells me that they had oil at one point in their experience. Living on the past, maybe on the faith of their parents or something in the past, but not a living, personal, current relationship with Jesus. You know, that's what we need, isn't it? You don't have to be good enough. If that's what you're thinking, you'll never make it. But you have to be connected to Jesus. Give us some of your oil. They, the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But 
Go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Here's, here's the most troubling part of the story. Because they went to church. They, they, they were Adventists. I mean, second coming believing. They had their lamps and those are a lamp or a light to our path. You know what the lamp is. They had everything except that which was most important. Lord, Lord, open to us. He answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore. Do not put off connecting to Jesus until later. Cry out to him today. Say, Jesus, save me. My Messiah. My Savior. Not because of how good I am, but because of how good you are. Watch, therefore, for you do not know the day or the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. I told you it's certain. But many of the professed followers of Jesus, you say, Derek, you're telling me 50%? Well, there's another one where 66% are right and 13 It doesn't. I'm not doing Jesus wants everyone to be ready. But many of the professed followers of Jesus will not be ready. I heard a story some years ago about three men on a train platform. Now, do we have trains here in California? Anybody taking a ride on a train? Okay. So I grew up in the UK, and I had to take a train to school. I, I took a train when I was in grammar school from Brighton to Hastings on the south coast. Now, I, if, you, if you've been on a train, you'll be a witness to me here. Um, you get on the train, and it goes, ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. Do you know what happens? You fall asleep. You do. The only reason I would ever get to school is because it would go, and I would go. So, so I've seen people standing on train platforms, and these three people, according to the story, they were standing there, and they were talking to each other. And while they were talking, they had the suitcases all there. The train pulled up to the station. And uh, people started getting off the train. And then the people on the platform started getting on the train. And the whole time, these three people are just deep in conversation. They were distracted. Hmm? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? Because we believe Jesus is coming soon. And I don't think there's anyone here today who doesn't want to be ready. But it is possible that we could become distracted. Well, they're talking together. And pretty soon everybody's on the train. And, and the whistle goes, whoop. And these three people look up. Two of them grab the bags and begin to run. And the train is already beginning to move. And they're running with the bags. They open the door. They throw the bags onto the train. And both of them get up onto the train just as it's pulling out of the station. One man is left silent on the platform. All alone. And suddenly, he begins to laugh. <laughs> and the laughter kind of swells. Well, the station master is watching this curious scene. He, he saw them very, what was the word again? Distracted. And then he saw the two grab the bags and run and throw them onto the train, get on at the very last minute. He saw this fellow standing there all alone, and then he begins to laugh. So, so he walked up to him. He said, sir, I realize it's not really any of my business, but I just saw you here laughing. And I was curious. 
And the man looked at the station master and said, Sir, uh, I can see why you'd be confused with me laughing, but you see, they came to see me off. Let me say that again for those for whom English is not a first language. He was the one who was supposed to be getting on the train with his bags. His friends had come. They got on the train with his bags, and he was left all alone. You say, that's funny. But it would not be funny if the gospel train came. Help us, Jesus. If the gospel train came and pulled out of the station and we were just left standing there when we knew, we knew. We'd had an experience at some point. We knew. We believed the coming of Jesus was certain. We knew. But we became distracted. I've got some good news for you, because my time's almost gone. I don't want you to leave depressed. I've got some good news. It's the most important news, actually. And that is that Jesus wants you to be ready. I used to think the most important thing was to live forever. I don't believe that anymore. I think what's important is to live forever with a Savior who loves me. Of that day and hour, no one knows, Jesus said, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know till the flood came away and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Watch therefore, Jesus said. For you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Therefore, you also, Jesus says, be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now, I want to tell you something. I believe Jesus is coming soon. But if he came next week, I'd be surprised. Would you? Huh? Well, some of you are planning to build a house. Some of you are planning to have more grandchildren. Some of you are still looking for a companion. But Jesus is going to come. We believe it, but he says, I want you to be ready. I'll come when you don't expect it. So the only way to be ready that day, hear me now, please. We're almost out of time. The only way to be ready that day is to be ready this day. Are you with me? To say, Jesus, save me today. I give you my heart today, Jesus. So that when that day comes, and by the way, I don't even know if I'll make it home on the flight overnight tonight. I don't know that for sure. Some of my friends didn't make it home. But I'm not afraid. Because <laughs> next thing I know, I'm going to see Jesus. Some of my Christian friends think it'll be right away. I, I know I've got a little sleep. But next thing I know, I'm going to see my Savior. So, so I just want to be ready today because, well, here's the second stanza of the song. Gabriel will his trumpet blow, wake the sleeping ones below. They in beauty shall arise to see Jesus in the skies. All men I will shout and What are we going to say? Glory, 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 he has come our heaven, the King, with them. Glory, 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 glory. You know, I'm pretty conservative. I'm a, I was born in the UK, you know, in the UK, if you get excited, you kind of twitch your ear a little. That's about all you can do. But I think when Jesus comes, I may even jump a little. I think I'm going to just say glory, glory, glory. He has come, our heavenly king. I think the choir is going to sing. And those were beautiful songs. Wow. That, yeah. But I think we might even say glory, glory.
glory. He has come, our heavenly king. Is there someone here today? You say, I just want to reaffirm that I stand with Jesus today as my Savior and Lord. You just want to say, I, I stand with him. I want you to stand up if that's you. And say, I want to be ready this day so I can be ready on that day. Because he's coming back, isn't he? Yes, he is. And if you can't stand, you can raise your heart. God sees your heart too. Now I'm going to tell you something even, maybe even a little more important than that. Because some of us have loved ones who really want to be there. Right? I'm going to raise my hand. I've got a couple of names on my heart right now. Anybody want to raise your hand? Someone on your heart? Maybe a family member, a friend? We're going to lift them to Jesus. He loves them. He wants them to be with him forever. Father, we're standing, but we're raising our hands too. You know. You know those precious people on our hearts. But first, with our hearts, Lord, we stand and say, Jesus, thank you for being my Savior and my soon coming King. <laughs> we can't imagine what it will be like when we see the sky catch fire and you come with 10,000 times 10,000 of angels. But I think we're going to say glory, glory, glory. He has come, our heavenly king, and we do not want to go there just by ourselves. But God, may many come with us that we have prayed for saved by your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.